Hi all, today we are going to discuss about load commutated chopper. So before proceeding, let us see why it is called as a load commutated chopper. Because here the commutation process, because we know we have seen in the case of voltage commutated chopper also, the commutation, the main device that is responsible for commutation is the capacitor. So here in this type of load commutation, in the case of load commutation, the current passing through the capacitor will be your load current. That means because of the load current, your capacitor is commuting the circuit. So that's why it is called as the load commutation. Here, unlike the previously discussed circuit, here total four thyristors will be used in the circuit. So at a time, two thyristors will be on and two thyristors will be off. Like for example, in this case, the thyristor T1 and T2 will be on. When thyristor T1 and T2 are on, T4 and T3, these two thyristors will be turned off so that your supply is connected to load through these thyristors. That means at a time if T1 and T2 are on, T3 and T4 will be off and vice versa. That means when T3 and T4 are on, T1 and T2 will be off. And second one I am assuming my capacitor is initially charged with lower plate positive with respect to top plate which I am taking as the positive voltage for the capacitor and the direction of the capacitor current positive current I am taking as the downwards in this capacitor. So initially I am assuming as it is charged to the supply voltage here you can see the thyristor T1. Thyristor T1 you can see this side one is connected to supply voltage this side the second side terminal is connected to negative terminal of capacitor. So that means this is forward biased. So same thing is the case for T2 as T2 is connected to positive terminal of the capacitor this is forward biased. If you go to capacitor the uh, thyristor T3, T3 is connected to negative terminal this side so that means this is reverse biased. So similar is the case for T4 as this is connected to positive this side so this will be reverse biased. That means initially T3 and T4 are reverse biased. T1 and T2 are in forward bias condition but whenever the triggering pulse applies they will turn on automatically. That is the initial condition I am taking. Okay. So now I am also assuming that my load current is always constant due to high value of inductance of my load. That means I am assuming I0 is constant. So irrespective of whether the current is passing through capacitor or not, my load current is always maintained constant. So how it is maintained constant that we are going to see. So let us start with T is equal to T naught at a time T is equal to T naught I am triggering my thyristor T1 and T2 because T1 and T2 are already forward biased so they will start conducting I can see here I have drawn it they represent a closed switch. So T3 and T4 because they are in reverse bias condition or they are open circuit. So then what will happen in the circuit I am just representing the circuit here. So now what happens your supply voltage this plus is connected through your thyristor T1 through your capacitor then it will come like this and from here it will pass through your load and return back like this. That means in this manner your current will pass. As I am assuming my load current is always constant so this current I0 is passing in this manner. That means the current through the capacitor is nothing but equal to I0 so IC is equal to plus I0. So I, you can see the waveform here I0 I am assuming always constant. So initially the capacitor is charged with lower plate positive with respect to top plate and the value of initial value of VC is equal to Vs. So now if you calculate what is the voltage that is coming across your load. So let us start from the voltage, so voltage source minus 2 plus that is plus Vs. Then going through the capacitor I am again going from minus 2 plus so plus Vc that is coming to your load. As initially the value of Vc is equal to Vs so total voltage that is coming across your load will be 2 times of Vs. So same thing I have represented here initially that at time T is equal to T naught voltage across your load will be 2 times of your supply voltage this much voltage is coming. Now coming to the capacitor voltage it is equal to Vs because as the current is passing like this that means leaving the positive terminal of the capacitor the capacitor will start discharging that means the voltage of the capacitor will goes on decreasing as the voltage across capacitor is going on decreasing so automatically the output voltage will also go on decreasing because we know V0 is equal to Vs plus Vc. Initially it is two times of Vs slowly decrease. Why it is linearly changing the reason is the current passing through that is constant. As current is constant that's why the voltage will change linearly. Okay, so that is the reason it is changing linearly. So by the time we reach the time T1 what will happen the capacitor will slowly slowly discharge finally it will reach zero and because the load current want to maintain constant because high value of inductance of the load so current will continue of same magnitude in the same direction. So that's why that happens the capacitor will continue to charge in the same direction 
to the negative direction. Until how long it will charge? It will charge until it reaches equal to minus Vs. So when it reaches the minus Vs, what will be my output voltage? Output voltage will be Vs. This Vc is minus Vs, so output voltage is equal to zero. The moment it causes a little bit above Vs, then what will happen? The output voltage will become negative. The output voltage will become negative. That means the capacitor will continue to charge until it has crosses a little bit above the Vs in the opposite direction. So by the time it reaches there, the output voltage reaches zero and becomes a little bit negative. So up to that time, the capacitor current is constant. I am representing here IC is constant. So as the same current, whatever IC is passing, the same current is passing through your thyristor T1 as well as a thyristor T2. So we can tell that the current passing through thyristor T1 and T2, it will be same as the IC for this duration 0 to T1. And T, T3 and T4, it is 0. So now, by the moment we reach time T is equal to T1, that means by the end of the mode 1, then what will happen? The output voltage is becoming a negative because the voltage across the capacitor is cross a little bit above Vs. The moment it cross above Vs, then automatically this output voltage become negative. When the output voltage become negative, what will happen? This freewheeling diode will be forward biased because this side is negative, this side is positive. So whenever this V0 is crossing little bit above 0.9 volts in opposite direction, this freewheeling diode will be turned on. So now what will happen? Your output voltage will start circulating through the freewheeling diode. So when the output voltage starts circulating, through the freewheeling diode, what will happen? The entire current is bypassed through this freewheeling diode. So what I mean to tell? The current passing through your capacitor will become zero. The current passing through your capacitor will become zero. So whenever the current passing through your capacitor, the value of IC that I am representing here, the value of IC becomes zero and the voltage across capacitor is little bit above Vs. So now you can see across the thyristor T1, one side is Vs, second side is Vs plus delta V and current is also zero. That means current is less than the holding current of the thyristor T1 as well as it is reverse biased with a voltage delta V. That means thyristor T1 is reverse biased. Same thing is the case for T2. You can see this is connected to minus. It is reverse biased by delta V. So both thyristor T1 and T2 will be turned off. Now coming to the T3 and T4. T3 and T4 will be forward biased now because the capacity charged with top plate is positive here. T3 is forward biased and T4 is also forward biased. They are ready to conduct. So now what happened? The load current is passing, circulating through your freewheeling diode. So entire current I0 is passing through this. So current through the capacitor is zero during this time. Output voltage is zero or little bit of negative. That means around 0.7 volts in the opposite direction. So the current through the freewheeling diode will be equal to I0 between T1 and T2. So the thyristor T1 and T2 are turned off. So that's why current through them is zero. Similarly, T3 and T4 are also off. That's why till now the current is equal to zero up to T2. So now coming to the voltage across the thyristor T1 and T2, up to the duration T1, that voltage is nearly equal to zero. After that, it is nearly equal to 0 0.7 volts. As it is negligibly small, so I am representing by zero here, up to here. So now at the instant of T2, because as T3 and T4 are ready to trigger, so I am triggering T3 and T4. So whenever you take the T3 and T4, what will happen? They will act as a closed switch. So whenever the moment they act as a closed switch, now what will happen? Your supply will be connected through your load through this T4, T3, then it will pass to your load and come out. So now if you apply the KVL in this loop to suite, let us represent that circuit, how it will come. The circuit will come like this. So in this circuit, what will happen? Now the current can pass like this. It will come like this. So then coming like this and then going to your load. So your I0 can easily pass in this manner. So now calculating the output voltage here, output voltage you can see here minus two plus. Again, we say I'm going from minus two plus. So total voltage will be little above two times of Vs because Vc is charged little bit above the supply voltage due to the load inductance. So that's why that much voltage will apply across your output voltage. That means output voltage will again become equal to two times of Vs. As this side is plus with respect to the minus in the second side, the freewheeling diode will stop conducting. This freewheeling diode is reverse biased. So entire current will pass through the load in this manner. So now what will happen? The capacitor will start discharging in this manner or otherwise the current passing through capacitor is I0 in the opposite direction to the reference current direction. So that's why this I have represented here. You can see the current that is passing through the capacitor is opposite direction minus I0. 
your output voltage again reaches two times of Vs and again started decaying. Now capacitor what will happen? It will start charging in opposite direction. It is at minus Vs, slowly it is charging to plus Vs. So by T3, it will reach above, little bit above the plus Vs. Again, same condition will happen to similar condition as a T1. That means as it is going on charging, it will charge in the opposite direction. It will charge in the opposite direction means lower plate become plus, top plate become minus and it is above little bit above the Vs. So that condition I am representing here, this is plus and minus. When it is charged like this, again same thing happens, T3 and T4 are conducting it at that time. So T3, T4, it is across your load, that load will be negative. That means your load voltage is negative. So freewheeling diode will come again into existence. Current will start circulating through this. So now the T3 and T4 are reverse biased because voltage across capacitor is Vs plus delta V and capacitor current is also zero. So that's why T3 and T4 will be turned off. So the same process will repeat every time. So in this manner it is operating. So here what are the design considerations that we have to take? So here you can observe before proceeding to this, let us see what is the behavior of the output voltage. You can see the output voltage, it is suddenly rising to two times of Vs. Slowly it is decaying because the capacitor is charging due to the current I0 at a steady value, it is changing from plus Vs to minus Vs. That means in time, let us assume this duration I am taking as on duration. Because remaining duration, you can see output voltage is off. This is off duration. This is on duration or the duration for which your output voltage is positive. So this on duration, so I can, I know that the current I naught, this will be equal to C into dV by dt. So voltage is changing from plus Vs to minus Vs. So total voltage that is changed is two times of Vs. So two times of Vs is changed in time T on time. So that's why I can write a C into two Vs by T on. Or uh, from this, I can write this I naught is equal to 2 into Vs into C, I have brought this set, 2 times of Vs into C divided by T on. This I am taking as equation number 1. So, or this can also be represented in another manner. So, this also I can represent as the value of T on from this. The on period I can calculate from this, 2 times of Vs into C divided by I naught. So we are going to use this at a later stage, we are going to see it. So now coming to how to calculate the average value of the output voltage. So you can see output voltage is active for this much duration, then off for the remaining duration. So we can just simply calculate what is the area under this curve, that means output curve for one duration, divided by total time duration. What is the area? This is a triangle, this will be equal to half into base into height. So half times of the base is, this is on time T on, so half times of T on into what is the height? Height is two times of Vs. It is reaching up to two times of Vs at this point I have mentioned here. So that's why half times of T on into two Vs by T. So when you are substituting it and simplifying it, you will get it as V0 is equal to, this two two will cancel. So this will become Vs into T on by T. So this one by time period, one by time period is nothing but the frequency or we can call it as the chopper frequency. That means after every time T it is repeating or one by T that gives the chopper frequency or the frequency of repetitions of the cycles. So this I can write as Vs into T on into F. So now what I am doing, whatever T on we got from here, this T on in equation number one, so that I am substituting in this equation. So when you substitute it, this is two Vs into C by I naught. So this will become Vs into two Vs into C by I naught into F. When you simplify it, it will come as two Vs square into C into F divided by I naught. So let us now go to minimum chopping period. How much? is the minimum value of the chopping period that is possible. So here you can see uh, one thyristor will take this much time because to change from, uh, because you, when the VC is changed from one positive VC to minus VC, then in that time only, these thyristors will be conducting. After that, they will turn off due to reverse bias. That means we have to wait for minimum duration of how much, how much duration they have to wait because that is the duration for which that is the minimum duration for which we have to operate or that we can tell that this is the minimum duration after which the second set of thyristors can be turned on. If you try to turn on before that, because they are not completely, capacitor is not completely charged. So commutation process will not happen to the remaining thyristor. That will lead to complete short circuit because both thyristors will be conducting, these two will start conducting, these also conducting, it will spoil the entire thing. So that's why we have to wait for minimum duration of T on. So that means we can tell that the minimum duration that is required that will be equal to minimum chopping period or for proper operation that is T min equal to T on. Or because this is the minimum value of time, that means it we can tell it as it indicates the maximum value of chopping frequency that will be equal to one by T minimum that is equal to one by T on. So now what I am doing from equation number one, 
I am bringing the value of the t on value so that I am substituting in this equation of f maximum. So f maximum will become 1 by t on so 1 by t on we got from there 2 vs into c divided by i naught. So when you simplify you will get it as i naught divided by 2 vs into c. So now the output voltage at maximum frequency that can be calculated by substituting the wherever f is there in the output waveform equation so that f I can replace with the maximum value of frequency that is this one. So this equation will become 2 vs square into c by i naught I have represented here multiplied by f maximum is i naught by 2 vs into c. So this will be nothing but equal to supply voltage. That means what is the meaning of this that means the moment that V0 has reached 0 immediately if you are triggering the pulse again next cycle will start. That means 0 to T1 will be there then T2 to T4 will be there. That means the output voltage is continuously conducting or the voltage is continuously changing. So that's why if you take the average value, average value will be simply equal to because it is repeating after 0 to T1 again repeating. So total duration is decreased to T on. So that's why you can see that average value that is coming as if you calculate it, it will come as equal to Vs. So let us see what are the advantages and disadvantages of this circuit. The advantage is this circuit is capable of commutating at any value of the current that is the benefit. There is no limitation of minimum or maximum current required. We are going to see in the next lecture the current commutator chopper. There there is a minimum value of the current required that is fixed. We have to always keep the current through the capacitor greater than that. That limitation is not there in this. Then there is no commutating inductor is required. So automatically the cost and size of the circuit will decrease because inductor needs more space to keep in the circuit as well as the cost of inductor is also more. So that's why that cost and size is decreased here. Then this can operate at very high frequencies of the order of kilohertz because there is no limitation of minimum value of the chopping current and other things. Here we can operate at a little bit faster rate. Right? Then the disadvantage of is the peak load voltage. We have seen that will reaching up to two times of supply voltage. So according to two times of supply voltage, you have to design the things there. So what is connected in the load side across the load one freewheeling diode is connected. So that freewheeling diode the two times of Vs is coming suddenly suddenly 2 Vs is coming that means in a very short time that means we have to go for a fast recovery type diode is required that to of a rating equal to 2 times of Vs so that part cost will increase then at a time as a, a pair of thyristors are operating together so switching losses will become 2 because a double the number is required when compared to other type of commutation methods then along with that Continuously at a time two thyristors are conducting that means losses becomes a double because there is a drop across them as well as losses in them. So that's why the efficiency of the circuit is less compared to other type of commutation methods. I hope the load commutation is completely clear to you. If you still have any queries you can leave your comments in the comment section below. I will answer to your queries from there. Thank you. Thank you very much.